students i welcome you all in our today's uh, sequel lecture so um, here we will discuss about the uh, theme of our um, poem once upon a time the themes and we can also discuss uh, the the literary devices which have been used uh, by the poet here so let's have a thematic analysis of today's poem so the poem once upon a time is uh, written by gabriel okera as you know already that he is a nigerian poet so actually this poem is written in the backdrop of nigeria's independence from britain so the poet seems to be uh, here soaked by the change of lifestyle values of uh, the values or morals which and the total change in the world view in the new independent country of nigeria so he seems to be mourning for the mourn, mourning for the passing away of a way of life though the country is politically independent it seems to him uh, to be still influenced by the bit that it by the british culture the poet remembers the way people used to behave and interact with each other in his own country uh, in older days how the people used to do things with their hearts and soul so the poem describes what happens when a traditional african culture and civilization meets with the western culture so with his nostalgic vision the poet recalls the golden times of the past the purpose of the poem is to outline the behavior and personality of the people at the moment it also makes an attempt to bring back the personality of the people who used to do things with emotion and heart so the poem is a conversation between a father and his son the son does things with his all emotions and father wants to forget his fake personality and he wants to relearn and recreate his personality by following what by following the values of the past he asked his son to express true love and to have real concern for others gabriel okara uh, in this poem is a um, this poem actually he talks about the artificial relationship and manners prevailing in the present world according to the poet past is better than present so because uh, in past there was love sincerity and faithfulness among the people now in the present what happen everything has changed hence the poet wants to relive the past so once upon a time the people used to do laugh with their hearts and eyes that is uh, there was genuineness in what they said and did but in the present there is only outward teeth laugh without understanding the speaker's real self so here the eyes are described as eyes block cold that suggests the people have become money minded and they develop their relationships only with the rich so they calculate the relationship in terms of money even when shaking hands with the others they are very artificial and mechanical so guests are no longer welcome these days they uh, they are given a warm reception only once like glad to meet you good readings so he says that it seems that uh, uh, they are given a warm reception only once it if they visit their friends or relatives thrice or more number of days the doors are shut on them so that is happening in this materialistic and artificial world the poet has learned many things especially wearing many faces like putting on many like putting on many um sorry putting on many faces like home face office face cocktail face and host face and so on so all are fixed just like the portrait smile 
as this is the way of the world the poet or speaker has also learnt laughter with it the art of saying goodbye or when he means good readings glad to meet you when he is not glad and still he has to perform in this way the poet wants to uh, his son to imbibe the exemplary values of the past so towards the end of the uh, poem the poet appeals to his son that uh, show me son how to laugh show me how i used to laugh and smile uh, once upon a time when i was like you know so actually he appeals to his son to show him how to smile wholeheartedly he desire to revisit the past is nothing but a yearning for the innocence faithfulness and sincerity and that is all the poet here conveys through this beautiful poem and if we talk about the, the other uh, literary poetic devices uh, um, used by the poet here so very first we can say that uh, here we find alliteration uh, in the line uh, hands with their hearts so hands and hearts here the repetition of the consonant sound h is used here so we find alliteration here and other in the next stanza we also find these muting things so the sound these things so me so so me sun when i was so so me so here the s sound is repeated here so when as you already know that uh, two or more close words uh, close words together in line begin with the same consonant creating different uh, sound textures that is known as alliteration and if we talk about the line feel at home come again they say and when i come so here we find there is a break in line so a break in a line where the reader poses uh, usually through punctuation that is called something caesura so caesura has been used here and in next line and in this fifth stanza and i have learned to to laugh with only my teeth and shake hands without my heart so here the literary device enjambment uh, is used by the poet here so what is enjambment when a line runs on into the next with no stop or pause maintaining the sense that is called enjambment for the example here in the first two lines of this stanza and i have learned to to laugh with only my teeth and say hands without my heart so you find here that there is no pause or stop here but still the sense is maintaining here and we also have uh, we also find here the literary device simile is used in the sentence um, where he says that many faces like dresses home face like dresses home many faces are like dresses so i have learned to wear many faces like dresses with all the confirming smiles like a um, fixed portrait smile so when something is compared to a different thing using the words like or as that is known as simile so the uh, in these lines simile has been used that if faces are compared to like dresses and smiles are compared to like a fixed portrait so these uh, are some literary devices which uh, 
we can find in this poem like simile resentment scissora and uh, if we talk about the tone of this poem so the tone of this poem is very nostalgic and perhaps a little ironic and the speaker really wishes to uh, relearn how to smile a genuine smile again how to laugh without pretension but uh, uh he is very apprehensive will he really be able to learn from his uh, from the youngsters or from his own son so the speaker is earnest here he clearly wants to get back to a time he perceives as pure and uh, um innocent and good in the old african culture before the western values crept and took over so this is the whole about this poem so i hope you enjoyed this session we will meet again in our next class thank you students